Welcome to the 11th lecture in general topology. The topics that we'll explore in this lecture include composition of functions, inverse functions, restrictions of functions, and countable sets. Okay, so we'll start with the composition of two functions in which the output of one function becomes the input of the other. So let f be a function from the set A into the set B, and let G be a function from the set B into a set C. Notice that the codomain of the function F is the domain of the function G. Then the function which we denote G circle F, and this is read G of F, which is a map from the set A into the set C defined by G of F of the element A is the same as G of the element F of A. And this function is called a composition of the functions F and G. That is the composition G of F is the set of ordered pairs A, C such that for every element B in the range of the function F f of a is equal to b and g of b is equal to c. So let's look at a map diagram tracing a single element. An element a in the set a is mapped onto an element b in the set b by the function f. So the element b is equal to f of a. We then map the element b onto the element c in the set c by the function g so that the element c is equal to g of b which is the same as g of f of a. Notice that for every element in the set a we map via a, via a two-step process onto an element C in the set C. This uh, two-step process can be described by a single function that maps each element in the set A onto an element in the set C, and that map is called the composition G of F. So notice that the order in the notation matters the composition G of F means that we first map an element from the domain of the function F into its codomain and then map that element from the codomain of F which is now the domain of G into uh, an element C in the set C. So notice in particular that if the set C is not equal to the set A, then the composition G, uh, rather F of G, is not defined. So, new definition the function which we denote with a lowercase letter i and the subscript a from the set a back into the set a defined by i sub a of the element a is the element a is called the identity function
on the set A. So notice very clearly the identity function is a bijection. So new definition. Let f be a function from the set A into the set B. Then a function g from the set B into the set A is the inverse of the function f if and only if the composition g of f is the identity map or identity, identity function on the set A and the composition f of g is the identity function on the set B. Now if the function g is the inverse of the function f, then we write g is f inverse. So next we'll prove a theorem. Let f be a map from the set A into the set B. Then this function f has an inverse if and only if the function is a bijection. So proof. Suppose that the function f from the set A into the set B has an inverse, which we denote f inverse, and this is a map from the set B into the set A, then we need to show that the function f is a bijection. So let x and y be two elements in the set A, and suppose that f of x is equal to f of y, then f inverse of f of x is equal to f inverse of f of y. This is the composition f inverse of f of the element x, which is equal to the composition f inverse of f of the element y. f inverse of the function f is the identity map or identity function on the set A, taking as an argument the element x on the left and taking as an argument the element y on the right so that x is equal to y. So the assumption that f of x is equal to f of y leads to the conclusion that x is equal to y. And hence, the function f is injective. So now, let b be an element in the set b. Then B is the same as the identity function on the set B, taking as an argument the element B, which in turn is the same as F of F inverse of B, which is F of the, taking as an argument, argument F inverse of B, where f inverse of b is an element in the set A, 
That is, for every element b in the codomain b of the function f, there exists an element a in its domain such that b is equal to f of a, and hence the function f is surjective. So as the function is both injective and surjective, the function f is bijective. So conversely, suppose that the function f from the set A into the set B is a bijection. Define a function g from the set b into the set a by g of b is the element a if and only if f of a is the element b Then the composition g of f is a map from the set a into itself where g of f of the element a is equal to g of the element f of a where the element f of a is the element b and g of the element b is the element a and so the composition g of f is the identity function on the set A. Similarly, the composition f of g is a map from the set B into the set B where f of g of the element B is the same as f of the element g of B where g of B is the element A and f of a is the element b. And so the composition g, uh, uh, rather f of g, is the identity function on the set b. And hence, the uh, function g is the inverse of f. So notice that if the function f is bijective, then it has an inverse. Further, f inverse is also bijective. since it has an inverse. Namely, the original function f. Okay, so new theorem. Let f be a function from a into b, and let g be a function from b into a set c if the functions f and g are both surjective then the composition g of f is surjective if the functions f and g are both injective, then the composition g of f is injective. And if the functions f and g 
are both bijective. Then the composition G of F is also bijective. So proof, first statement, as the function g is surjective, we have that for every element c in the set c, there exists an element b in the set b such that c is equal to g of b, and as the function f is surjective, We have that for every element B in the set B, there exists an element A in the set A, such that B is equal to F of A. And so for every element C in the set C, there exists an element A in the set A, such that C is equal to G of F of A, which is the composition g of f of the element a. And hence the function g of f is surjective. Second statement. Let x and y be elements in the set a and suppose that g of f of the element x is equal to g of f of the element y. Then g of f of x is equal to g of the element f of y. Now, as the function g is injective, we have that the element f of x is equal to the element f of y. And as the function f is injective, we have that the element x is equal to the element y. And so the assumption that g of f of the element x is equal to g of f of the element y leads to the conclusion that the element x is equal to the element y. We have that the composition g of f is injective. So third statement. As the functions f and g are both bijective, Each function is both injective and surjective. So by statements 1 and 2, the composition g of f is both injective and surjective. And hence the function g of f is bijective. 